WLNS is here for you with six news at five. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are focusing on the so-called blue wall today with stops in Michigan and Wisconsin. It is our top story today at five. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sherry Jones. Now this comes as the final weekend ahead of Election Day, marking the end of early voting in most states, including Michigan. Christian Benavides is here for you with the latest from the campaign trail. Hey. The race for the White House shifts to the Midwest today. Prior to a rally in Janesville, Wisconsin, Vice President Kamala Harris called down former President Donald Trump's comment about former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. This must be disqualifying. Anyone who wants to be President of the United States who uses that kind of violent rhetoric is clearly disqualified and unqualified to be president. Trump shot back during a stomp in Michigan. If she had to do it herself and she had to face the consequences of battle, she wouldn't be doing it. So it's easy for her to talk, but she wouldn't be doing it. Uh, she's actually a disgrace. Trump and Harris will hold dueling rallies in Milwaukee tonight. A major focus for both campaigns has been getting supporters to the polls. That's resonated with early voters who've set records in many states, including here in Georgia, where more than half of eligible voters have already cast their ballots. There was a steady flow of people at this polling place in Atlanta's Bughead neighborhood for the final day of early voting here. I am very upset with our current government and the way things are being run. Uh, the border is a major, major issue, not to mention the economy and numerous other things. Why is it that you're voting for Kamala? Um, because I think she has a respect for people, the people of the United States, and wants to really represent their interests, and I don't think that of um, the other candidates. While election workers deal with millions of voters, they're also dealing with misinformation. Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger went public to refute a viral video alleging to show Haitian immigrants voting multiple times. U.S. intelligence agencies believe the fake video is the work of a Russian government disinformation campaign. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Atlanta. Well, as we just heard, both presidential campaigns continue to prioritize Michigan. VP Harris will make a stop in East Lansing on Sunday, the final day of in-person voting. She's scheduled to attend an event on Michigan State's campus at 6.30 Sunday night. Her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, is blitzing through our state today. He campaigned in Detroit last night and went to Flint this afternoon before delivering remarks in Traverse City later this evening. Now, on the other side of the ticket, former President Donald Trump will also be here today. He's set to speak at a rally at Macomb Community College in Warren. We have also learned that Mr. Trump will hold his last campaign, campaign rally on Monday night in Grand Rapids, as he did back in 2016 and 2020. And his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, was in Michigan today as well, speaking at a rally in Portage at 1 o'clock. And as the election draws near, a bipartisan group of former election officials say local, state, and federal governments are prepared to keep the 2024 election secure. The group points to more than 66 million people who have voted early as evidence that systems are working well. They also say they anticipated having to tackle incidents like the ballot drop boxes that were ignited both in Oregon and Washington state. The more pressing issue, they say, are ramped up efforts in these final days leading up to the election to spread disinformation online, which a majority of Americans do report seeing. People should understand that these only affect how people think about the election. They're not a, a, affecting the actual infrastructure. Our, our systems are safe and secure. The hardware is safe and secure. Well, they say Americans should not expect to know election results that night or even the morning after. Election officials and representatives from both parties are in agreement that it's more important to count votes accurately than know the results quickly. 
Well, strikes and hurricanes threw a shadow over the labor market in October. After two major hurricanes, the Labor Department says the economy added just 12,000 jobs. There is some good news, however. The unemployment rate held steady at 4.1 percent. Wages are up 4 percent from a year ago, beating the rate of inflation. Also, the inflation rate now back at target levels. The Federal Reserve is expected to announce another interest rate cut next week. So be sure to stay with 6 News here on air, online at WLNS.com and on our free 6 News app because we are your local headquarters. Back here in mid-Michigan, Ingham County Sheriff deputies need your help tonight finding a car involved in a hit and run. It's a crash that happened last night in Aladdin Township near Mason and sent a woman to the hospital with critical injuries. Our Rachel Ramsey is here for you now with more on what happened and what you should be on the lookout for. Rachel? Yeah, Sherry, the crash happened last night around 8 p.m. near the intersection of Cedar Street and College Road. The Ingham County Sheriff's Office says the 66 year old woman from Mason was rear ended and the vehicle that rear ended her left the scene and has not been located since. The Sheriff's Office tells me the woman was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Now they are searching for the other driver involved. I'm told people should be on the lookout for a blue Ford SUV. It's certainly going to have some significant front end damage. So, you know, any kind of blue, probably newer Ford SUV that you see with some fresh damage to it, certainly maybe jot down a license plate. Don't make contact with it, with them, but jot down a license plate and give us a, give us a call. And call the Ingham County Sheriff's Office with any information that could help them find the driver responsible. The Sheriff's Office will also be reviewing video caught by cameras on businesses and homes nearby to see if that can bring any answers. We'll have more from the Sheriff's Office and reaction from neighbors coming up on 6 News at 6. Sherry, back to you. All right, thank you for that report, Rachel. And if you have any information about this incident, call Crime Stoppers at 517-483-STOP. Your information could make you eligible for a cash reward of up to $1,000. And remember, you don't have to leave your name to leave a tip. Little Dreamers Daycare Center is undergoing a major expansion of its early childhood education. The move aims to help ease Lansing's child care shortage. This project includes 30 new child care slots, 15 new employees, and 3,000 square foot of additional space. It also includes new classrooms, a larger outdoor play area, and enhanced learning spaces. To make sure that we have a safe space for our kiddos to go, that families can know and trust that we're going to do our best to take the best care of them um, and to feed them just as well as, as, as we educate them. And so we're really excited to be a part of the solution that Lansing is facing when it comes to child care. Little Dreamers started at a home-based child care service in 2015. Well, you may have noticed that our temperatures are starting to cool off, and that means that kids across mid-Michigan are going to need some clothing to keep themselves warm. And if we're asking you if you can help make that happen. It's time for our annual Coats for the Community Drive, and that's where we team up with Crystal Ray Community Center and other local partners to help people make it through the winter. And it's not in fact, if you have hats and scarves, gloves, or any other winter clothing, you can drop it off right here at the station at Crystal Ray, Carpet Studio in Okemos, your local Barry Amos cleaners, or one of three Shaheen Automotive locations. Coats for the Community was scheduled to end on Halloween, but it's been extended through November 15th. And it's just one more way that 6 News is here for you. From Storm Tracker 6, this is Weather First, sponsored by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. Well, after being spoiled with high temperatures in the 70s for the past several days, it certainly felt a lot more seasonable across mid Michigan today, with most of our high temperatures only making it into the upper 40s to low 50s. This cooler season that we are seeing starting off this evening is all thanks to a cold front that passed through the area overnight tonight. And certainly the dense cloud cover that we saw throughout the day also added to these cooler temperatures that we are seeing. We are going to start to see some improvements in terms of the amount of sunshine that we are expecting as we move into the weekend. That's as this area of high pressure begins to move just a little bit closer. Unfortunately, though, it looks like that sunshine is going to be relatively short lived as we are going to start to see the chance for rain increasing as we move into the second half of the weekend. Cloud cover will begin to clear out overnight tonight, looking at mostly clear conditions across the area. Still plenty of sunshine in the forecast as we move into our Saturday. Temperatures likely just going to be a few degrees warmer compared to what we saw today across the area. Cloud cover returns as we move into our Sunday 
Monday morning, waking up to mostly cloudy to partly cloudy conditions across the area. This area of low pressure does appear to me a lot more slow moving compared to what we originally anticipated. So it looks like most of the day on Sunday will actually end up dry. Rain showers will be moving into mid Michigan right around eight or nine o'clock Sunday evening. And then we are going to hold on to that chance for rain as we go throughout the entire day on Monday and also just in time for our Tuesday as well. This is going to bring a very decent amount of rainfall to the area. In fact, most of our rainfall totals across mid Michigan will be ranging anywhere between three quarters of an inch all the way possibly up to an inch and a half over the course of three days. And of course, as we know, we had a very dry September and dry October, so the rain is certainly needed across the area yet again. We have mostly cloudy conditions this evening across the area. Temperatures in Lansing at 47 degrees after a high of 48. Yet again, it was fairly breezy as we started off our Friday. A peak wind gust of 46 miles per hour reported in Lansing. A little bit more in the way of sunshine and Grand Ledge. Temperatures actually made it into the 50s over here. One of the few locations to actually do so across mid Michigan. We're at 47 degrees in Jackson after a morning low of 43 and it was a very similar situation throughout the day in Hillsdale currently at 48 after a high of only 49 degrees. As we move throughout the overnight hours temperatures falling down to the freezing mark thanks to the mostly clear conditions that will be moving in. For tomorrow, still going to feel fairly seasonable. Highs in the mid 50s, plenty of sunshine across the area, and then that chance for rain moves in. Friendly reminder, early Sunday morning, we get an extra hour of sleep, Yay. and thankfully, most of the day on Sunday still going to be ending up pretty dry. We jump up into the upper 60s for highs Monday and Tuesday. Notice next weekend, a little bit more in the wane of rain for our future. I know, but really in your 50s, not a bad start to November. No, and I mean, even upper 60s, so still the trend is towards warmer conditions. All right, we like it. Thanks, Kendall. Coming up on 60s at 5, high school football playoffs are underway. We're going to take a look at some of the matchups when we return, so keep it right here. 60s at 5, we'll be right back.